Okay. So to think about the, to create the formula from scratch, I'll give you a hint. It involves four separate terms. And each of those terms, we do one by one by one, especially the collective thinking of the class, like a wiki, we'll be able to come up with the answer. So what do you think the most important part of the formula, or the more obvious part of the formula, or the really the most important part is going to be? Which of all the symbols on the board do you think will be the most, will definitely be in the formula? Yes, David. The first thing is you start out with your average. That's going to be the foundation of your answer. If you believe the average of your sample is 20.5, you're going to take that number, you're going to make it a little bit larger, because you, you know, if you just say the answer is exactly 20.5, you'll be wrong. Even though you'd be close to the right answer, you'd be wrong. So you want to make it a little bit larger to give yourself some extra insurance on the high side. You want to make it a little bit smaller to make it like subtract out something like so, so you end up something like 20 and 21. But you've got to start out with the average. So that's one out of four pieces so far. So you've got the easy one. What's the next piece of the formula? Thank you. Yes, Tiffany. The variance is definitely going to be in the formula, except instead of the variance, we'll, we'll take the square root of the variance, which is the standard deviation. You want to pass this back to Tiffany, please? So the second answer is the standard deviation. Now, where is it going to be? On the bottom of a fraction, the top of the fraction? It's going to be on top because the bigger the variance, the bigger the standard deviation, the more insurance you have to give yourself. For example, if the standard deviation is, is 10, then you've got to say x bar plus or minus 10 on the high side, 10 on the low side. So the bigger the sigma, the bigger the interval. And of course, the bigger the interval, the, more, the less precise you are. It would be nice if you can give the, the boss the answer. I believe the average is somewhere between here and here, not here and here. So, so the, big sigma does, the bigger the sigma, the bigger the answer. So that's two out of four. What else belongs in there? Yes. The sample size, very good. The sample size, and that belongs on the bottom because the bigger the sample, the more accurate everything is and the smaller the interval. So it definitely belongs on the bottom and for technical reasons, we put in a square root. Now, the sigma over the square root of n is called what? The standard error of the mean, which means how much the, and again, I really want you to understand this intuitively, how much the averages deviate from the ideal. So having these two things together as one unitary thing also makes sense. So we're down, now we're down to the fourth and final piece of the formula, which in some ways is harder, in some ways is easier. Woody, you, you don't have your name out here, but benefit of the doubt. What's the last piece? Yes, yeah, sure. Because when we, st we talk about the sigma squared, this is the original formula, sigma squared over n, which makes sense. But then we, take a, then we talk about sigma, everything gets square rooted. It's just a technicality. It's nothing to... To worry about too much, but that's the good question. What's missing in the formula? And again, I'm, since we're running out of time, I'm going to answer my own. Yes, David. The percentage, because if some, if, if you want to be 95 percent sure, the answer is going to be something from here to here. If you want to be 80 percent sure, it can be from here. If you want to be 99 percent sure, the percentage. So the, as the percentage gets bigger and bigger, the interval gets bigger and bigger. So how does that? So you can simply put a 95 percent here, except. Without going through author mathematics, which some of you sort of hopefully know intuitively by now, the x bars follow a bell shaped curve, and the spread of the x bars is sigma over n. So, without showing you all the mathematics, the 95% gets changed into a z score, and it's the z score that corresponds to 95% that's going to be in the formula. And by the way, I, I realized I just, that's what I was trying to think of before. Somebody asked me about the question, I think maybe it was Ada. Somebody asked me the question about, what numbers are in between, in other words, chapter seven, but reversing chapter seven, where they tell you, in chapter seven, they tell you the numbers, and they ask you to find the probability or the percentage. But some examples, especially online, they ask you, they tell you the percentage, and they want you to work backwards to get, the, maybe that was the formula you were showing me, that was it. So we can still do one of those next time if anybody wants me to do it during the review on, on Friday. But, that, but what we're doing right now is very similar. We have to figure out a Z number that together chops off 95%. So let's fill in what we know so far and then finish up the last piece. Because we just, this is it, this is chapter eight. The x bar in this example is either 20.5. The sigma is two. The n is 100. The only thing that really ha we haven't done yet to finish up this, which is half the test, is the z. I'd, rem I'd recommend the following picture. And again, like all my pictures, most people don't do them, but it really makes life easier. You start out with a basic z diagram. You make two vertical lines indicating that between those two pieces, you're going to chop off the desired degree of confidence, in this case, 
this picture helps you, and your job is to figure out which particular Z number in the back of the Z table actually chops off 95%. Possibilities might be plus 2 and minus 2, plus 1.6 and minus 1.6, plus 1.9 and minus 1. So which is it? You can do it by trial and error, but if you know your Z table, how would you do it? Well, you'd realize, what is this piece that's over here? What percentage? Yes, Laura. 2.5 Zero. How do you know that? If we take 1 minus the 95 is the missing 5%, but there are two pieces here, so you chop it in half, and that comes out to 0, 2, 5. You then turn to the back of the Z table, which is again why I, I beg you to bring the table to class. You look up, not on the outside like we've been doing till now, you look up on the inside of the table, 0, 2, 5, 0, obviously on a, a negative side of the table, and you figure which particular Z number chops off 2.5%. So please do that quickly. Since, yes, Laura. Say again? So negative 1.9, and then you go over to column 6, and that, in fact, is the correct answer. So the Z number, after one, again, anybody who would like to try to do this in class now is welcome to do that. It's a little bit late to throw everybody out at this point, so I can't, <laughs> I won't, but at some point they might. And that negative 196 is pl plugged into the formula. Now, do you have to put the minus sign in? No, because the plus and minus are built into the formula, so if you put it in, just make it more work for yourself. That's it. So now let's calculate it. So what does this come out to? And it, we're expressing this at interval. The low number gets first, the high number gets second. How much is 2 divided by 100? That's 2 over it's 0.2. How much is 2 times 1.96? Uh, 3.92, right? 3.92. How much is oh, 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 0.392? 0.392. This is 0.02. How much is 20.5 plus 0.392? 20.89. Guys, I hope you're taking out a calculator and, con and confirming this, because on a test you say, well, how do you get this number? Well, if you did it once in class, you won't tell me how do you get the number. So please do it. And how much is 20.5 minus 0.39? 20.11. So after all is said and done, the, qu the answer to my question, which was find a 95% confident inf confidence, let me write that more clearly, confident, confidence, interval estimate of mu, the answer after all is said and done is 20.11 to 20.89. Now, if you were doing this, practically speaking, for a boss, not for a question on a test, you might want to round it 20 to 21, which is my original answer. But the, the actual answer is 20 point from here. Any question about, again, the logic of the formula, how you find the four numbers to plug into the formula? Any questions at all? Yes. No, 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 they were 95% sure that the real, what was the original question? What is the average of all people on St. John's? I'm pretty sure, 95% sure, somewhere between 20 and 21. That's, that's what this answer will tell you. tell you. We're going to spend a lot of time on Wednesday interpreting the spinner assignment. It's going to be to help you, we'll, do, we'll probably do the spinner assignment in class to interpret this result. But the, the, the simple interpretation is what you think it, what it sounds like.